But this should work. We should be looking pretty good. Yeah, we only lose just a part of your shoulder, Jeff, so you're good. The main thing is this guy. And, and, and as long as we got the tower up there, right? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Ready. So, Philip, tell us about your new role at uh, Comscope. Well, first off, I want to thank you guys. It's always a pleasure to talk to our friends at RCR. Uh, last year, I was asked to take on a new role in Comscope. I'm responsible now for um, strategic marketing uh, for the wireless group, the Andrew brand. So one key thing is we're really bringing back the whole Andrew brand. So I'm really proud to be uh, in a role where I can help really promote the Andrew brand. But the key part of my new role is to help our team understand the future requirements of networks and what we can do as kind of the industry experts in RF to help the industry as a whole deploy RF in more effective ways. What are some of the key, key trends you see over the next 12 to 18 months? Well, I think there's two really key trends. One is, as an operator, how do I get the maximum amount of capacity out of my existing assets, either my existing frequencies or my existing technologies? And the other key trend is how do I add new technology in the baseline of my existing technology to overall increase my overall ability? So those are really the two kind of top of mind things. And of course, with that becomes operating cost and power levels and all the other things that are associated, but that's really the two key things. Can you tell me uh, some changes you've made to Comscope's existing product line to uh, maybe uh, a plan for those changes and then talk about some of the upcoming things that you plan to implement uh, to address those two key trends? Absolutely. So the first one that we recently announced is our new DAS system that we call Eye on You. And our view is that as venues become more and more loaded with high value users and high traffic areas um, those sectors will continue to need to be split into more and more dense sectorization so with the DAS system that basically means adding more nodes and the more nodes you add the more complex the management infrastructure of the entire system could become so our new platform Eye on you really is a step forward in simplification of that whole DAS network. And we think it makes a DAS network that's scalable to the point where additional capacity can be added, additional nodes can be added in a way that really hasn't been available to the market at all to date. So we think that's a really key initiative. Uh, a second key initiative is what we refer to as sector sculpting. So a lot of people talk about small cells and small cells is really how do you add capacity and coverage where you need it the most well our sector sculpting initiative is aimed at how technology can be applied in your existing sites so that you can use the capacity on those existing sites for a longer amount of time before you even need to add additional small cells and then the sector sculpting initiative is also aimed at once you implement a small cell site uh, how well do we shape the RF patterns and how well do we control the energy that that cell site uh, creates either good energy or unfortunately sometimes bad energy with interference to help manage the overall system. So we think that's a really secondary key initiative that we've launched. Okay. Um, you got an inter interesting structure behind you. Can you tell a little bit about what we're looking at behind right. you? Well this is really about the second key, uh, second key trend that we see of network modernization. So we were fortunate to be asked to cooperate with a large operator in, the, in, uh, in Asia, in the Middle East, Oradu, uh, as they planned out their network modernization strategy. And they basically were facing a pretty big challenge. They operate in many, many countries, I think it's 17 different countries, and had somewhere around 15,000 sites that needed to be touched. So a pretty big over uh, and sometimes overwhelming strategy. And one key thing they wanted to do is use remote radio heads at the top of the tower to really squeeze out every bit of energy that they could and maximize the value of their investment. So they came to us and said, help us come up with some ideas about how to do that. Well, the first thing we did is we talked about the antenna system itself. And in a traditional site, you would have had, if you had five different technologies, you might have had five different antennas. 
So the first recommendation we said was let's simplify your antenna system and try to get your antennas down from five per sector or maybe three per sector, maybe two per sector, but we think we can get it in one antenna per sector. So in this particular antenna technology, which we call the ultra band multi-port antenna, uh, we're actually launching five different kinds of services and up to nine different kinds of frequency combinations out of one antenna face. Well, you can imagine that relieves a lot of wind load challenges on existing structures. If you had to add all those additional antenna faces, it would really create a lot of wind load. So the second key, prob uh, second qu uh, key initiative was putting the radio heads at the top of the tower. So in a traditional application, if you did radio heads where you put them below the antenna, they would also add wind load. Uh, we came up with a clever way, working with Herodu as well, to mount the, the radio heads on a mounting platform so that they're all right behind the antenna. And that minimizes the frontal wind load and makes the overall site a little bit easier to get installed. Then the second problem was you've got all these cell sites across all these regions and a lot of variation in the in the culture of the people who will do that installation, just the language barriers. So how do you get enough people trained to do all that correctly so that your costs don't skyrocket and you have a bunch of investments that don't ever pay back for themselves? So we we used our, our fiber to the antenna uh, solution from, uh, from our uh, Heliax fiber solution, uh, which is a bundled core solution with fiber optics and power all in one bundle. And then we developed, and again in collaboration with it, with Oradu, a system where we would pre-assemble the antenna system, the uh, remote radio heads, the the mounting structure, all the connections on the ground, and then have that assembled at one time on the tower. The key to that was it eliminated a lot of manual labor that happens at the most expensive place in the world to make a mistake at the top of the tower. So we do all that high, uh, more precision work where there's a lot of um, potential personality in the workmanship, put that on the ground so we can really control it, uh, develop some standard architecture. You know, standardization is very important. If you're going to roll out a lot of sites at one time, standardization makes a big, big impact on your cost. So that let us really help standardize. And, and then drive to the solution. And ultimately, we're now working toward um, actually doing that whole assembly in our manufacturing facilities. We can do a PIM test, we can do VSWR test, we can do system certification, and then provide the entire package in one, in one solution. Phil, thanks for your time. You bet. It's great talking to you.